All right, so welcome back to the next step uh, using or finding the limiting reactant. So before we were using a very simple analogy using a recipe of jumbo omelets. Now we're going to actually use that same method but apply it to a real chemistry problem. So here is the chemical equation that I had before. And let's say we had, so this right here is called butane. This is oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. So let's say we had hmm, 50 grams of butane. And let's say we had 50 grams of oxygen. Okay. So the question is, which one is a limiting reactant, what is the theoretical yield, and which one is in excess? So, like I said before, we just simply have to figure out uh, what is the maximum amount that these two reactants can produce. But, look at the units. They're in grams. Remember I said it's very important that before you use the mole ratio, you have to put them into moles. So, the, the very first step is to convert them into moles. So, over 1 times grams on the bottom, so they cancel, moles on the top. So, the molar mass in 1 mole, the molar mass of butane is 58 grams. Okay, so that will give us... That will give us, let's see, zero point eight six two moles. Same down here, one times grams, moles at the top, and one mole. How many grams are there? So the molar mass of oxygen is going to be thirty two. So 50 divided by 32 is going to be 1.566 moles. Okay, now, <clears throat> now that we have them in moles, we can use the mole ratio to find out what is the max amount that each one of them will produce. So... Now, before we only had one product, now we have two products. So, the question is, which product do we use for the mole ratio? For, for example, for butane, do we do it between butane and carbon dioxide or between butane and water? Well, the answer is, it doesn't matter which one you use. As long as you use the same one for both of these. So, you can do carbon dioxide or you can do water. But, I'm actually kind of thirsty right now, so we'll do water. Okay. So, change the colors up, put it over 1, multiply it times the mole ratio. Okay, so moles, moles, uh, better write this out. I'm running out of room, I'll make it work. Okay, now you just look at the numbers. So for butane, there's a 2 in front, and for water, there's a 10. Remember, I got these numbers. The 10, I just simply looked at this number in front of the water, wrote it here. Looked at the number in front of the butane, and then I wrote it here. No math required for that part. For this part, there's going to be math. Okay, so 0.862 times 10 divided by 2 is going to be 4.31 moles of water. Units are important. All right. Now for the bottom one, same method, moles of water, now we're using water because one, that's what I asked for, and two, because we use water for the butane, so we have to use the same product in order to get a correct comparison. So 10, again, and then 9, alright, here we go. And I got 
1.73 moles of water. All right. Okay, so what did we just figure out? Let's look at this. We just figured out if 50 grams of butane will produce 4.31 moles of water, and 50 grams of oxygen will produce only 1.73 moles of water. So remember, like I said before, the one that is the least amount is going to be your limiting reagent. So this one is smaller. So water, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not water, oxygen is your limiting reactant. So we come here, let me, uh, Alright, so that makes the butane the one that is in excess. Yeah. Excess. So, what is the theoretical yield? Well, if you were to use both the maximum amount of the limiting reactant, the max amount of the product, or water, is going to be 1.73 moles. So therefore, your the 1.73 moles is your theoretical, and I don't know if I'll fit it in there. There we go. Theoretical yield. So we just figured out the limiting reactant, the theoretical yield, then the leftover, what is the one in excess. All right, so, but also, what is going to be your percent yield? So, 1.73 moles of water is your theoretical yield. Okay, now, what is your percent yield? So say you actually go and do this reaction, and you produce, uh, let's say, 20 grams of water. So this right here is your actual yield. So the question is, what is your percent yield? Remember, percent yield is simply, I'll write it out. Percent yield is your actual divided by theoretical sorry it's getting messy times a hundred okay so you just simply have to take your actual which is 20 grams divided by your theoretical which you have right now 1.73 moles now it's very important that your actual when you divide your actual by your theoretical it's very important that they are in the same units so you can use 20 your your actual yield in grams divided by your theoretical yield in grams or you can use your actual yield in moles divided by theoretical yield of moles it doesn't matter what units as long as they're in the same units so we can convert moles to grams or we can convert the grams into the moles and let's convert moles to grams remember it doesn't matter which one you do so 1.73 moles of water divided by one times moles grams so zero two one mole remember that's just the just the molar mass and it comes out to be thirty one point one seven grams of water so that is your theoretical yield so now we just simply plug it into this equation and your percent yield equals your actual which we're using grams twenty grams divided by divided by your theoretical thirty one point one seven 
times 100, that equals 20 divided by 31.17 equals 64.2%. And there you have it. Um, here is your percent yield based on your your actual yield and your theoretical so we've gone over the limiting reactant the excess the theoretical yield actual yield and the percent yield so I hope all of this made sense and again if it doesn't make sense if you have a question or problem that you want me to work out you can send it to me and I'll make a video on it and I'll see you next time